Congestion and narrowness of East University make it one of the most dangerous streets in Des Moines. The state and the city are now moving ahead with plans to widen it and make it safer. And now that's fine for many people, but another part of the plan has businesses all along East University up in arms. Bill Mahler is standing by with a live eye report. Bill? Thank you, TJ. What business people here on East University don't want is a median. That basically is what a median looks like there behind me. But we are standing near the intersection of East Hubble and University. The proposed median would stretch for miles behind me to the other side of the fairgrounds. The problem is that if the median is put in, the street would have to be widened, and a number of businesses, 13 in fact, would have to be relocated. The biggest problem, however, is the idea of putting in that median. Few dispute the traffic problems along this narrow highway, but if the city and state correct them with a concrete medium, store operators say they're going to lose customers. It's going to close our doors. How's that? There's no way that people coming from the east are going to get, be able to get into our establishment. This median along Fleur Drive is about like the one that the city wants to put in on East University. This one's been here about seven years, and business operators say it did hurt their business when it was first put in. Well, it didn't hurt us, but I think the long-range uh, effects of the median strip, the good things about it, uh, are positive. What do they include? Uh, you don't have as many wrecks. It's much, much safer. The group Citizens for Community Improvement has gone to bat for the East University businesses. It refuses to give any ground on the median idea. CCI people say that if something must be done, that it might support a continuous left turn lane down the center. Afternoon told us that the idea of a two-way left turn lane just won't work here on East University. The plan works fine on streets like Southwest 6 here in Des Moines, but the traffic situations here on East University are completely different. The traffic is just too heavy. Years ago, when this street was a small thoroughfare, it was no problem, but recently, cities like Pleasant Hill and other suburbs on the east side have been increasing in population. The commuter traffic in and out of Des Moines has been picking up tremendously. Also, any time the fairgrounds are in use, it's a problem. There's talk now of paramutual betting at the fairgrounds. That would just further compound the problem. Bill, why has not something been done sooner? Well, it's simply because it hasn't been a problem until relatively recently. As I said years ago, this was just a small two-lane road. As traffic got heavier and heavier, they expanded it into a four-lane road. And then finally, now that traffic is so bad, the only plan they can come up with is to expand it again and put in the median. Thank you, Bill. Good evening, I'm Bill Mahler. For more than a month, inmates in the Iowa State Prison at Fort Madison have been locked in their cells. The prison warden says it would not be safe to let them out because of all the damage caused by rioting last month. Today, hundreds of protesters were expected at a huge march at the prison, but only a few dozen showed up. Paul Long has the story of their complaints. Families of prisoners may be getting some answers tomorrow morning. The Iowa Department of Social Services, which runs the prisons, plans a news conference. We are told it will be about adult corrections, but the media are not being told anything else about it. 20-year-old Paul Bush of Des Moines was killed last night when he ran his motorcycle into a car at 9th and Euclid. He was driving about 60 miles an hour when he slammed into a car, making a left turn in front of him. For most of the year, Winterset, Iowa is known to most people as the birthplace of John Wayne. But every year on the first weekend in October, the residents of Winterset turn to nostalgia and celebrate their covered bridges. The loyal fans of the ancient TV series Star Trek die hard. A small force of Trekkies led by a piano teacher from Maine are organizing against a Hollywood plot to do away with Mr. Spock, one of the show's stars. Leonard Nimoy, who plays that role, wants out. So in the sequel of Star Trek, the motion picture, the script calls for the death of Spock. Marianne Drack, the piano teacher, quotes an independent study which claims that Paramount would lose $28 million if Spock is killed off because the hardcore fans would just not go see the movie. That's all of our news tonight. Thanks very much for joining us. Hope you'll join Mike Keene and T.J. Beer tomorrow night at 6. Otherwise, have a good week, and we'll all see you next weekend. The courtroom in the Bradley Mather murder trial was packed today. The jury heard a sometimes emotional tape recording of Mather confessing he started the February 27th fire at the West Des Moines Executive Inn. Two Durant teenagers died in that fire. Bill Mahler spent all week at the trial. Here's his report. The recording was of an interview conducted with Mather three days after the executive in fire last February. The tape began in a friendly, relaxed atmosphere, but the questioning became more and more intense as Special Agent Ed Oakey of the State Fire Marshal's Office pressed Mather about what happened the night of the fire. Oakey, tell us the truth, Brad. We're here to help you. You have to tell us. 
Mather was not welcome in the executive in bar because he once threw a beer mug at someone. On February 27th, he was told to leave. He walked to the storage room door where the fire started. Oki, I want to know what took place right there by the door. Mather, I didn't go in there. I was just smoking a cigarette. I might have dropped it. Oki, you have to tell the truth. You're not telling the truth. Mather, I was kind of mad. Oki, you're going to have to admit how it happened. We're going to get the truth from you. At this point, Mather was in tears on the tape and in the courtroom. Slowly, under persistent questioning by Agent Oki, Mather revealed what happened. Oki, pull yourself together one time and tell the truth. Mather, now in tears, I did it. I did it because I was mad. I did it intentionally. The hallway turned yellow. I was scared. I was running. I threw it under the thing, the thing, you know, whatever you call it, door or whatever. The jury was obviously moved by the emotional outpouring on the tape. As they left the courtroom, many jurors had handkerchiefs in their hands. Was Bradley Mather coerced into making that confession? Or was Agent Oki's intimidating manner, as it's been described, normal procedure for a state employee? Those are two points that the jury will have to wrestle with as it decides if Mather's confession necessarily means he is guilty of murder. Bill Mahler, News Center 13. A well-known local character has lost his battle to stave off eviction. And from the looks of it, it's understandable. Bill Mahler has the latest on a sometime Des Moines resident known as Ratman. Wherever Leonard France and his infamous horde of rats move, county officials waiving court orders are never far behind. Today's eviction was nothing new to many of these people. They've served notices on the Ratman before. France crossbreeds rats, turning whatever shed or abandoned house he happens to be living in into utter filth. He's had repeatedly refused to obey judges who literally order him to clean up his act. Court orders to move France and his rats haven't worked. He's had appeals on hold all the way up to the state Supreme Court. France knew this latest eviction notice was coming and once again had time to spirit his rats to another unknown location. Filthy. I, I hate to even walk in there. Sam Galinsky owns the property and he says he really didn't mind France living there until he saw the rats. We drive by here and we'd see a car sitting there and we investigated and it was him. And I asked him to get out, oh it's probably been two months ago. And he says, yeah I'll get out in a couple days and he never did leave. It's hard to imagine anybody wanting to return here to live. But if Leonard France and his rats, wherever they are, try to return here now, the rat man may find himself spending his next night in jail. Bill Mollard, News Center 13.